At the beginning of the program, you saw that many sensors supply analog signals. You also saw that the measured values are processed digitally. This section shows how analog signals are converted into digital ones. Look at the steps each signal undergoes. The coolant temperature is a physical value like most others. The NTC sensor converts the temperature to a corresponding electrical resistance. The measurement circuit generates a voltage from this. The resistance and the measurement voltage are also analog values. The measurement voltage is converted to a binary number in a special circuit called an analog to digital converter. The binary number is finally used in the calculations of the microprocessor. This is the basic structure inside an analog to digital converter. Select various coolant temperatures and watch what happens when you hold down the buttons. This is what you saw. In the comparator of the analog to digital converter, the measurement voltage is compared with graduated voltages. Each graduation is assigned the corresponding binary number in the encoder. The binary number is sent to the other digital circuits in the control unit. You may continue to try this out if you desire. Open the additional information to find out about the three basic types of analog to digital converter. Most people think that digital is more accurate than analog. This is not true. See for yourself in this experiment. The oscilloscope image at the top shows the analog signal recorded by the temperature sensor. The signal is digitized by the analog to digital converter and shown in the display. At the output of the control unit, another voltage is generated from the digital numbers and shown on the oscilloscope image at the bottom. Now move the temperature up and down by clicking the buttons. This is what you should have seen. The digital signal is only as accurate as the graduation of the converter. This is known as the quantization error. The analog signal is only recorded at the start of analog to digital conversion. Thus, the digital signal does not show the change between two readings. This is known as the sampling error. You may continue to try this out if you desire. You can also click the additional info for more details on the accuracy of typical analog to digital converters. Now you know that an analog signal can be converted into a multi-digit binary number. But how can this binary number be processed? 
This section shows how binary signals are transmitted serially, in other words, one digit at a time. In order to be sufficiently accurate, binary numbers normally consist of a number of binary digits, known as bits. Often, groups of eight bits are used. These are called bytes. Click the button to start the transfer. It is shown here in a simplified form at first. As you saw, during serial data transfer, all the bits in a binary number are transferred in succession on a single wire. In this example, a low signal stands for zero and a high signal for one. There has to be a number of conventions between the transmitter and the receiver for serial data transfer to take place without errors. This is called the protocol. As well as the agreed voltage levels for 0 and 1, it includes the following main items. The data transfer speed, the codes for the start and end, the agreed number of data bits, and the convention for checking whether transfer is correct. The transmitter and the receiver must be synchronized. Therefore, they must agree on the data transfer speed. This is defined by the number of bits transferred per second. Without this agreement, the receiver would assign incorrect values to the binary positions. The unit, bits per second, is also known as a baud. Click the Start button. In the sequence you just saw, it took 8 seconds to transfer 8 bits. The transfer speed was therefore 1 bowed. On a high-speed CAN bus, this happens much faster. Typically, half a million bits are sent and received per second. Thus, the high-speed CAN bus is specified as 500 kilobouds. Did you notice that the last data transfer began with two ones, which cannot be distinguished from the high state of the bus line? However, the receiver must be able to detect the start and the end of a data transfer using the signal itself. One frequently used method works as follows. The start of a new transfer is announced using a sequence which is different from the idle state. Try it out. The start bit, in this case a low level, is not part of the transferred number itself. At the end of the transfer, the bus is switched to the idle state for at least one cycle. This is known as the stop bit. The word length of a data transfer is usually defined as 8 bits, a byte, or a multiple of this. It can also be used flexibly. 
on a CAN bus, the number of following bytes is announced at the start of the transfer. In this way, the receiver can anticipate the number of bytes to follow. What happens if there is serious interference to the digital signal between the transmitter and the receiver? Try it out. The interference has reversed a bit. A 1 has been turned into a 0. This is a serious corruption of the binary number. To test that the data is correctly transferred, a parity bit is sent after the binary number. This bit is selected so that the total number of 1 bits is even. If there is an odd number of 1s, the parity bit is also set to 1 in order to make the total number of 1 bits even. If there is an even number of 1s, the parity bit is set to 0 so that the total number of 1s is also even. Try the data transfer again. The receiver checks whether the number of 1s, including the parity bit, is even. Since this is so, the receiver knows that the data was transferred with no errors. Now, to check, start a data transfer with a fault. If a bit is reversed during transfer, there is an odd number of 1s. The receiver detects the fault and requests the data again. Instead of even parity, odd parity can also be agreed upon. In this case, the parity bit is set so that the total number of 1s is odd. The CAN bus uses a more complex procedure known as a cyclic redundancy check. The additional information contains details on checks and correction methods for data transfer. The CAN bus protocol is a complex protocol which contains even more information. Click the highlighted sections for more details. You will find out more about what they do in the CBT program on CAN Basics. The start bit indicates the beginning of CAN data transfer. The identifier indicates what the value on the CAN bus represents, for example, the coolant temperature. This bit is called the remote transmission request. It allows the transmitter to ask for a response. This section also contains control information, such as the number of data bytes to follow. This section of the message can be between 0 and 8 bytes long. It contains the actual CAN bus value. The cyclic redundancy check is transferred here to ensure that the data is transferred without errors, much like the parity bit. The transmitter leaves this time period free for receivers to report any errors. The stop bits indicate the end of CAN data transfer. There is then a pause of at least three bits before one of the transmitters starts the next transfer.